Hello my fellow Jetty users, welcome back to my workshop once again for another of my little Jetty Clinic videos. And in this one, we're going to take a look at digital trim and flight mode trim. Because I still sometimes get questions about them and what's the difference between them and how can you operate certain things. And I've sometimes done some pretty fancy things with digital trim in previous menu uh, videos, especially about uh, using uh, one of the tuning knobs or trim buttons to trim uh, gyros uh, settings uh, using stepping trim rather than rotating proportional, that kind of thing. Um, but I don't think I've ever actually gone into just digital trim and flight mode trim, specifically the difference between them. Uh, if you've watched my videos about setting up various models or using flight modes, then we've certainly covered using flight mode trim. But some people are still a bit hazy about what's the difference between that and digital trim. So let's take a look. I've created a basic little model, but it does have a second throttle setting here, running off the P4 stick as does throttle one, uh, because I'll be using that as a trimming example. And some people with twin engine models do prefer to have two throttle functions because you can do all sorts of fancy things then about uh, isolating each engine independently for setting them up while the other one's running, starting, that kind of thing. Uh, and so, of course, I've got a little throttle two assigned servo as well as throttle one. OK, let's go into fine tuning. We have got digital trim and flight mode trim. Uh, you don't have to have created additional flight modes in order to use flight mode trim. Why? Well, your Jetty transmitter is always in a flight mode, even if you have not set up additional flight modes. What I mean, there we are. You are in the default flight mode all the time, unless you create additional flight modes and switch into them. And therefore, you can use the flight mode trim in this default flight mode, should you wish. Digital trim. This is what is going on with the trim buttons. Now, uh, you're wondering why you've got these two additional bars here. Let's pop back in there. That's your throttle rudder. Well, if you're mode two flyer, throttle rudder, ailer and elevator trim. What are these two additional bars? Well, they are the two additional trims you can set in digital trim. If you're selecting a model, function assignment, notice here there is a column for trims. Uh, now, the transmitter will automatically assign the trimming buttons for you for the four standard functions. Please do not put anything in there thinking that you have to sign the trim buttons. It'll cause massive confusion to the transmitter. And if you've got additional functions that you fancy a trim on, uh, I'd suggest not doing it here either. You don't get any sort of control over it. You want to do it in the digital trim menu. So into our digital trim menu. And what we can see here, this is meant to be a representation of the sticks. That sort of little cross plus sign inside a circle. That's meant to be your two transmitter sticks. And the tiny little arrows beneath them are representing which trim button. Get my finger out of the way, it'll refocus. Yeah. So you can see I'm a mode two flyer, which means ailer and elevator on the right. So the trim button side to side would be the ailer and function trim, elevator function trim, rudder function trim, throttle function trim. Okay. And down here, there's a couple of extras you can add in, and that is what covers those two blank bars on the trimming screen. Anyway, we'll come to them in a second. What does it tell us up here? You can set the trim to be global or separate per flight mode if you've got additional flight modes. Uh, the actual value of the trim at the moment, so if I press the alien trim button, you can see it's jumping 2% each time. And if you want, you can store values. Not really necessary much of the time. But notice down here, there's a right arrow, which means there's another screen out here to the right. Let's press it. And here's the other screen. Here's the mode of the trim. You can see they're centered, but the throttle is throttle low. And what it's telling you there is where will the trim apply? Uh, centered mode means that the trim will have full effect when the stick's in the middle and no effect when the stick is at the end of its travel. 
and it will proportionally reduce the trim effect until you get there. The great thing about that is, of course, it means your end points don't change when you use the trim. It's just the middle and proportionally decreasing all the way out. What other choices are there? Linear. Whatever trim you make will apply across the entire travel of the servo, so your end points are going to shift as well. So if you apply 4% right aileron trim, uh, it won't just be the centre that shifted 4%, the end points are going to be shifted 4% as well. So if you've applied 4% right aileron trim, then your travel to the right is going to be 104% and your travel to the left is going to be 96%. Um, I tell a fib there because trims are worth half of that. So if you've applied 4% trim, you've actually got 2% travel. So your travel endpoints would become 102% and 98%. Uh, so that's why the system defaults to uh, centered rather than linear. You've got throttle low, which is what the throttle has defaulted to, meaning that this time the trim effect, instead of happening at stick middle, it happens with a throttle stick at low, i.e. all the way back. And it progressively wipes out the trim until you're at the stick all the way forward, full throttle, trim has no effect. So it doesn't affect the end point that you've set up at full throttle. You can have uh, throttle low 50%, so with the stick a quarter of the way forward is where the uh, neutral point of the trim would be, where it has most effect and its effect would reduce out other directions. Or if you want to reverse it for some reason, the throttle high with the stick fully forward would be where the trim has its effect and the stick fully back would have no effect uh, on the trimming travel. So down to centered and step and rate. Now then, trim, if you see the word trim in Jetty, uh, the number is actually only half of that in servo travel. So in digital trim and in flight mode trim, if you see 100%, it means it will move the servo 50% of its travel, not 100% of its travel. So when you see a step of 2%, the servo is only going to move 1%. And the rate, which is the maximum effect the trim can have, at 100% means it could move the servo 50% of its travel. Now there's a minus and a plus rate. The minus rate is the trim one side, like throttle back or left aileron, and the plus rate is uh, throttle trim forward from the middle or right aileron, that kind of thing. With 2% step, 100% either way, it means you've got 50 clicks of trim coming left or throttle back kind of thing, and 50 steps of trim, uh, throttle forward, aileron right, up elevator, whatever. And you can change these. If you increase the step, the trimming step will become much more coarse. It'll become bigger and there'll be fewer of them. For instance, if you change it to a 10% step, uh, you'll get 10 of them in 100%. A 10% step would move the servo 5% of its travel at each click. Uh, so if you're worried about a maiden flight and you don't like using auto trim and you want bigger steps of your trim to get things uh, underway, you can do that. Let's have a quick look at it. Uh, if we come out down to here and I will uh, push in down elevator. So the trim step on the right, you'll see it moving 2% each time. But that's a trim 2% each time. That means it's 1% of the servo travel each time. Let's take a look at the servo travel. Which one's my elevator servo? This one here, number three. Now, when I move it, you'll see the number only changes 1% each time. There we go. All right, back into fine tuning, dig a little trim. And let's change the step. And I, I do this generally with throttle on my jet engines. What I'd like to do is have just one click up for the engine run, one click back down to shut it off. You may prefer a two step uh, or more steps.
I've never had a problem running it as one step. How would I do that? Well, I take the value all the way up to 100%. I don't want a backward rate, so I'll take that down to nil. So now the trim coming backwards doesn't do anything. I've only got forwards trim uh, at 100%, so it will actually move the servo travel 50%. Uh, out of minus 100, zero plus 100, so that's a quarter of the servo travel, and it'll do the whole thing in one step. Let's have a look at that. If I operate the throttle trim, see, because we've only got the positive value, I can press it minus as much as I like. Remember, we took that rate down to zero, and uh, we've left this one as 100 with a 100% step at a time, so there we go. Let's have a look at what that actually does to a servo. There's my throttle servo, that one. So if I press up trim, it jumps. Remember, we gave it a 100% uh, range, but being a trim, that's only 50% of servo travel units. And therefore, it jumps it between minus 100 and minus 50. Now, that might be a bit too much for your ECU or whatever you're trying to do. So we can go to it. Oh, I need to come along here. And change the total rate of it. I'll take it down to 60%. And let's see what effect that has on the actual servo travel. First of all, we'll take a look at the trimming itself. See, that's still going between 0 and 100 because the trim step has been left at 100%, but the effect on servo travel is going to be half of the value we set, which was 60%. So it's going to have a 30% effect. Therefore, we'll go from minus 100 to minus 70%, just like that. And so uh, you can set up a value that your ECU on a jet engine, for instance, would at least recognize. If you make this value too small, um, some ECUs will not recognize the difference between engine run and off. So that's an example of what you can do with stepping. If you prefer uh, a two-step rather than a one-step, we could come here. Look at this, for example, and we could change that down to 50%, so it would do half of the 60 in one go, or you could put a minus rate in there, and then at least the minus bit will go as well. Let's have a look at uh, that. I'll take this down to 50. So now each step will be... Uh, 15% because the total is going to be 30% of servo travel and each step is worth half of it. Say OK to that. What do we mean? Let's have a look once again at the trim itself. It will now be a two step upwards. See? But I can't come back because I've still got zero in the negative rate. But my forward rate is that now. And the effect on servo travel will be there's trim back, trim forward. There's moved at 15%, and there it's moved at the 30%. Okay. Now, what else can we do in here? Well, we can add in two more trims. That's those two empty vertical columns in the center of the trim screen. What I could do here is let's say I want uh, a separate trimmer for my throttle number two. Well, I can go here. I can choose another trimmer. Let's say for argument's sake, the P8 knob. Okay, and I can set that as my throttle two trimmer. Now let's have a look at what happens in trimming. I'll rotate the P8 knob. See, this one's become active now. And I have to rotate it clockwise. It just sticks there. I've got to come back to the middle, clockwise again, back to middle, clockwise again, back to middle. Now I'll rotate it from middle 
anti-clockwise. Back to middle. Anti-clockwise, back to middle. Anti-clockwise, back to middle. Anti and you've got to keep doing that. Okay. What other options have we got there? Well, we could set it to a switch. So rather than having to rotate the knob, I'm going to set it to a three position switch. There we go. Now, with the switch in the middle, uh, if I pull the switch back each time, I'll get a negative one. I can leave the switch there, won't do any more. The trim will go away again. The switch is in the down position. I move it back to middle, nothing happens. And finally, if I move the switch forward, there. So you could use a spring-loaded switch for this, for example. Or, if you're uh, really lucky or sensible, you've got yourself a DS24. And the 24s have several controls on the back plate of the transmitter. So let me show you. There, a rotary knob, a switch, and a pair of trim buttons. And I've got them on both sides as well. So, Yahoo! I could set that throttle trim to be those trim buttons on the back. So clear that out. Press that trim button. There we are. Okay. And now, let's have a look at the uh, servos. There's our two throttle servos. Throttle function one. Throttle function 2. I'll increase the trim on throttle 1. Doing that. But it's not affecting throttle 2 because throttle 2 is working on the trim buttons at the back, which are still set to 2% and 100% either way, meaning it's a 1% servo step each time I press the button. There we go. So I can completely independently trim the throttles with those buttons. Or... We could have done it with, as you see, a rotary knob, a little side slider, three position switch. All very nice and handy. Now, there is a lot more you can do with the digital trims, but that gives you an introduction into getting in there and doing some of the things with them. So how does it differ from flight mode trim? Well, digital trim is active. Uh, it's something assigned to one of the trim buttons, rotary knobs, switches, whatever. And you can actively change it in flight and, and fine tune it and this kind of thing. Flight mode trim is a value that you have preset before you've gone flying. And then you can activate it through the flight mode switch. Um, so for instance, here uh, you can set your ailerons, if you had multiple servos, servo one, servo two, you can set a value in there that will raise both ailerons together. Now, of course, your aileron trim won't do that. Your aileron trim will move one left, one right. In flight mode trim, you put in a value. You could have a left and a right aileron, um, go, you know, uh, one going up, one going down. But generally, you would do things like raise both ailerons a bit, if you want a little bit of crow braking, if you just want to tune in a little bit of uh, sort of a downward angle, a washout for landing, that kind of thing. And it would be invoked then per flight mode. So the flight mode trim is a fixed value that you have preset before you fly. You, you don't dynamically change it during the flight. And it allows you to have all sorts of differential values. For example, I said we'd be setting both ailerons to come up, whereas the trimmer would be one up, one down. And you can set them to independent values to take account of different linkages, servos, servo travels, that kind of thing. So if you use the trim button to adjust the aileron, not only is it one up, one down, but they're both getting the same value. If you trim 10%, then you're getting 5% travel on both servos. Whereas in here, the fixed value, you could have 10% on that one and 12% on this one. Be, take account of slightly different val linkages. Okay, so that's your difference. Digital trim, it's dynamic, it's during the flight, uh, and it would just do 
what you expect it to do, like trimming your ailerons. It'd be one up, one down, and they both get the same value. Flight mode trim is a fixed value that you set before flying. You can't adjust it during flying, or you shouldn't even leave this open and try to. Um, and it can be set to different values per flight mode. That's the idea behind it. And I mentioned, in, as we did with digital trim, the word trim means that whatever value you set here, half of that value will be applied as servo travel. So if you were to set ailerons to 10% up, what you'd get is a 5% servo travel signal. Okay, so I hope that's helped uh, show you a little bit of what you can do with the digital trim and what the difference is to flight mode trim.